Hi guys, it's Olga. Today I have a special treat for you, not only because today we're making desserts, but because I have my friend here, Nikki, with me today. Hi guys! <laughs> we decided to share with each other and also with you guys healthy versions of our favorite desserts because we figured Valentine's Day is coming up mm -hmm. and you might want to make desserts for your loved ones. Right? Yes, I desserts like my favorite thing in the world. So same here. So on my channel, I'm going to show you how to make a raspberry cheesecake, carrot cake bites, and an easy tiramisu, which I'm really excited for you to try. I'm so excited to eat. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started. Let's do this. The first dessert we're going to make is my raspberry cheesecake cups. For the crust, you will need almonds, dates, some vanilla, and sea salt. First, you want to soak your dates in hot water for a couple of minutes. This helps your food processor to blend them easier. Next, place almonds in your food processor and process until they become ground. By the way, all of the desserts that I'm going to show you today do not require baking. I personally love making no-bake treats. I think they're so easy. Once the almonds are ground, add the rest of the crust ingredients and process for 1-2 to two minutes until well combined. This is the consistency that you're looking for. Your crust should be sticky. Next, go ahead and line a muffin tray with liners. This will make your life so much easier when you try to take out the cheesecake cups later. Trust me. Grab a tablespoon and use it to divide the crust between the muffin cups. I usually flatten the crust with my fingers to make sure the entire bottom is covered. This is a really easy and yummy crust to make and you can use it for tons of different vegan desserts. Next, let's prepare the filling. We will need raw cashews that have been soaked for 3-4 to four hours, almond milk, raspberries, I'm using fresh raspberries but you can also use frozen, lemon juice, maple syrup, coconut butter or coconut oil, and salt. Add all of the ingredients except for coconut butter to your blender. We use my Vitamix for this. And as always, you want to start with the liquids to help your blender out. Blend for about a minute and watch the ingredients turn into a creamy pink delight. Add the coconut butter and blend for another minute. Once you're done blending, this is what the filling should look like. Definitely taste it at this point because it's incredible. The taste reminds me of raspberry yogurt a little bit. It's really, really good. Next, go ahead and divide the filling between the muffin cups. There should be enough to fill them up to the top. The next part is the hardest waiting. Place the muffin tray in the freezer for two hours or overnight. Oh look, YouTube magic, our cheesecake cups are ready. <laughs> Take the liners off while the cheesecake cups are still frozen. This is what they look like when they're done. Really cute. Place the cheesecake cups on a plate and let them defrost for about 15 minutes. Then give them a try. We didn't wait long enough, so the cheesecake was still a bit frozen, but it was really delicious. <laughs> I was never really a fan of the traditional cheesecake, but once I tried the raw vegan version, I became obsessed. <laughs> try making this cheesecake with different berries. Use whatever you like, they will all work really well. Moving on to the next dessert that Nikki and I made, which is my carrot cake ball. The ingredients that you will need are carrot, of course, nuts, I'm using using a combination of almonds and walnuts, shredded coconut, dried currants or you can also use raisins, maple syrup and coconut oil. For the spices we also added cinnamon, ginger and nutmeg. First grate the carrot, I usually use a fine grater for this recipe. Then add the nuts to your food processor and process until ground. Next, go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients except for the carrot and process until well combined. As always, I included the measurements and directions for these recipes on my website at fablunch.com. The link to that blog post will be in the description. Finally, add your shredded carrot and process one more time until all of the ingredients are well combined. This is how it turns out. It might not look so appetizing right now, but trust, it is super yummy. Grab a dish and line it with parchment paper. We're going to roll our dough into balls and coat them with shredded coconut. If your hands get too sticky, have a bowl of water nearby to quickly wash them. This will help you form the balls. You can also use ground nuts or chia seeds to coat your carrot cake balls. I personally really like shredded coconuts, so that's what I use. Place the coconut balls on parchment paper. As you can see, our last one turned out chubbier than the rest of them. Then put the dish in the fridge for 2 hours to set. After 2 hours, take the carrot cake balls out of the fridge and enjoy. I really like that this dessert is not super sweet and the spices really make it taste 
tastes like a carrot cake. And the last dessert that I'm going to share with you today is this easy vegan tiramisu. For the crust, we will need walnuts, dates, a tiny bit of instant coffee, you can skip it if you want, but it makes a really big difference, vanilla and salt. Just like we did for the cheesecake, first step is to soak your dates. Next, add walnuts to the food processor and process until ground. Then add the rest of the crust ingredients and process again. The crust is ready. Before I make the filling, I put the crust just like this in the fridge for 10 minutes or so. This will make it a little bit more manageable and easier to place in the mason jars. Now let's make the filling. We will need raw cashews, no need to soak them, soy milk, maple syrup, melted coconut oil, vanilla and salt. Place all ingredients in your blender starting with the milk. You guys know the drill. And I know you're going to ask if you can substitute soy milk with something else. Unfortunately, no. If you use another non-dairy milk, your filling won't turn out as thick as you need it to be. Blend for about 2-3 to three minutes until you reach a creamy consistency. This filling tastes so similar to the actual mascarpone filling. It's pretty incredible. To assemble our tiramisu, we use these small mason jars. These are 4 ounce mason jars that work perfectly for this recipe. Take the crust out of the fridge and divide it between six mason jars. Flatten it with your fingers or a spoon. This is how much I usually put in each mason jar. Now that all six mason jars have the crust in them, we can add our tiramisu cream filling. Next, place the mason jars in the freezer for 15 minutes to set. After 15 minutes, take them out and dust some cacao powder on top. I also like to decorate them with a few coffee beans. This is optional, but I think it looks really nice. Now let's place the mason jars in the fridge for about 6 hours. Yes, a very long time, but it's so worth it. I hope you're ready to try this deliciousness. Oh yeah, this dessert is so rich. I think it might be my favorite out of the three. And it tastes very similar to the traditional tiramisu, so everyone who tries it is always surprised. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want even more healthy desserts, make sure to head over to Nikki's channel because we also made a video there. I'll have the link for you in the description. Nikki, do you want to tell us what we made? Yeah, over on my channel, we made a double chocolate cake, a creme brulee, and a blueberry lemon crisp. And all three of them are vegan friendly, gluten free, and really delicious. Yummy, yummy. Make sure to check that video out because the desserts that we made were amazing. So I hope you guys, again, enjoy this collab. We love you very much and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye, guys.